When I look at the finished show, I see an awful lot of people at their A-game. I see some of the finest acting, I see some of the finest writing, I see feats of technical brilliance that I can't even comprehend. But more clearly than anything else, I see a piece that has been loved onto the screen. Do you ever think about what animal Pan will settle as? Pan thinks he'll be a lion. I don't. And you? A woodpecker. I have anxiety issues, and uh, um, uh, the woodpecker is always there to remind me that I'm a failure. Well, I always thought my demon was a wolf, but I have discovered my demon is actually a pit pony. Aww. Yeah, pit pony. OK, cool. I'd love to be as cool as an aeronaut, but I think I'm Egyptian in my soul somewhere. I like being on my own, but not enough to be on my own with a small Arctic hare in a basket. Well, Very you'd, many it'd be a miles. Pit pony, which would be would difficult. Be pit, that would be terrible. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, Egyptian. Mrs. Coulter. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, I'm just, maybe I'm thinking we're in the middle of post-producing season one and actually having Mrs. Coulter as a right-hand person will get, get stuff, stuff done. done. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about you? Lyra. Yorick. Oh. Lyra, because I'm Roger in my soul. I too. thought you were going to say Yorick. <laughs> well, I'd love Yorick. Mm. I think Yorick's a better answer. Mm. I'm going to mm. swap to Yorick. <laughs> such as dark materials is not about greatness it's about goodness and I think at this particular moment in time when there is so much trumpeting about greatness that actually simple acts of goodness um, that Lyra does that Roger does is the way forward for us and, and it's not to take away that there are huge political moves to be made, but I think if even politicians live their life through simple acts of goodness rather than a desire to be great, um, then our world would be a very good place, which in turn might one day make it a great place. Yeah. We enter season one in Oxford, and I think the most important the important thing we did from a production design point of view was try and keep it as authentic as possible. So it's similar to our world, but not exactly like our world. We tried to avoid any obvious sense of period, and we really took almost like as a proposition that uh, Lyra's world had just avoided an industrial or technological revolution. Start in there mainly because the magisterium had suppressed the kind of knowledge that would bring about an industrial technological revolution. So it was sort of stuck in a moment in time. The main difference in the world is the demons. And it's not a matter we've taken lightly. The fact that your soul is on display changes the very essence of how you interact as human beings. You might be better to think about what your world can do for this one. Now he comes out. She. And I don't pay you to advise me. I think it, the scariest thing was how we are going to include the multi-worlds, which wasn't included in book one. And we talked about it, and we talked about it, and we talked about it, and went through so many mm. different iterations. Mm. Yeah. And then you said, Let's start with Boreal, and let's have Boreal take us into yeah. the world. Yeah. We saw actually how strong Arian was as Boreal, yeah. and what a great genre shape that character was turning out to be, thinking that a little bit of Boreal to make it more of a thriller would really help us. You're coming with me. Mr. Scoresby, you're not walking. Three reasons. One, I struggle terribly with bunions. Two. Someone's got to protect this balloon. Number three, why walk when you can ride? Trying to maintain the story path, I'd say, was the biggest challenge. Because on this show, there was an awful lot of brilliant ideas coming at you from all sides. You know, we have literally, you know, some of the greatest minds in television work on this show. And sometimes it was hard to keep a straight path 
and to remember that this had to be an emotional story where certain things impacted on this girl's development and staying true to the, to the soul of these books uh, and above all else, staying true to Lyra was the biggest challenge of the show. I'm frightened too. What I know is fighting back is the only way. Lord Azrael. Thank you, Master. Part of the thing that makes this dark material so special is that it's not a YA thing. And uh, um, what we've done with our television adaptation was we enabled people of all ages to watch the drama and take something different away. And never at any point do the novels themselves or your adaptation ever talk down to the children. You give children drama that they can aspire to and that they can grow with and grow into. It's a universal journey for us all, which is, what, what is it like to be untethered and have to find your own path? For me, it is those layers and that depth that make the book transcend just a YA piece. This, at its heart, is an incredibly sophisticated property, and I don't care how old you are, you can understand what Lyra is going through, because fundamentally, this is about Lyra finding her identity, and that's what Philip has written, and he does it so beautifully. And actually, to be honest, I think it comes all the way back to where we started. If you make television for greatness, you're not going to get anything other than something that's aping greatness. If you make television for goodness, then maybe you'll make something that people really want to watch and remember.